everyone and welcome back to Full Recovery. Today you'll be watching part two of my interview with some great servants of Christ here in the Northeast. This is April Clark, this is Jay Clark, this is Carla Clark, this is Pam Miller, and this is Tammy Fisher. I received so much positive feedback from part one. Uh, the thing I heard most predominantly was that uh, so many women felt like they were sitting right there in that living room having that discussion with us and taking part in that conversation and that was my goal. And so I'm so glad that uh, so many of you felt that way and that that part of our conversation was a blessing to you. So today we're at part two and uh, today we'll be tackling a few more of those questions that were posed to me on Facebook. I hope this part is a blessing to you. I hope it's an encouragement to you. I hope it strengthens your faith. And, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Let's jump right in. Yeah. So it's been good to have these conversations. Right. And it's funny, my son, Michael, he's very political. Mm -hmm. He's always been. And mm -hmm. he was telling me the other day, he said, I went in Wawa and I didn't wear my face mask. <laughs> good for him. And no one said one thing to me and they can't, yeah. you know? And it's just funny how you see their different personalities kind of you know, and he's like, I don't need to fight. I have a First Amendment right. I do whatever I want. And then if they give me a problem, I'll fight with them. That's right. Right. That's right. right. Yeah, we ain't coming in like, with a big sign. I'm going to tell you I'm right. going to do what I'm already allowed to do. Yes. Yeah, right. You come tell me I can't do what I'm allowed to do. Absolutely. And that's, yeah. it's, so it's just, it's interesting and, and very good. Mm -hmm. yeah, to, I think it's really them. good to hear. Yeah. Right. And then to, to right. on their and own, for them to mm -hmm. see. feel that. Yeah, that you know, where we live in Connecticut, um, well, we live in New York, but our church is in Connecticut, and our oldest daughter, who's expecting, lives in Connecticut. And um, she found out just before this, uh, she told us on February 23rd, mm -hmm. but wasn't ready to share it with everybody else. But our governor in Connecticut um, tweeted that a newborn had passed away from COVID when it was not so. Mm. But that put every expectant mother in a panic. Right. And um, just, what are we gonna do now? You know, what's gonna happen? And I know that was that factored into her not wanting to tell mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's been proven that that baby did not pass right. away from the coronavirus. Um, but it is a scary time. It's it's crept into, you know, our, our thinking. The next generation is processing things kind of differently than we would in many respects. The thing I don't uh, like in to see in anybody is operating out of fear, mm -hmm. you know, but this has made us fearful collectively. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to get back to the place where we, we understand bad times have come before they're gonna come again, right. you know, but we have to keep doing what is right. Do you have some memories or knowledge of something in history that has happened like this before? Well, first of all, in, in all of our in all of our lives, we have never faced anything like we're facing mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Basically, we have lived very easy, mm -hmm. it's true, mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. Challenged, pretty much. Yeah. Um, God has God has been so good, mm -hmm. so good to us. I'm not saying that God has turned His face on us. Not in any sense. Mm -hmm. You know, I can see God's hand and God's blessing through. Through all of it, God's mercy and His grace. But um, you know, a couple scary times for me. Nine Eleven was scary mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Our country was attacked. Mm -hmm. We had never, in my lifetime, I had never, you know, encountered anything like that. I was teaching third grade at that time, and <clears throat> my principal came and told me privately in the hallway that the towers were just attacked by terrorists. Mm. But I was not allowed to tell my students that mm. and that parents were going to be picking up. And I had to make sure ID was shown even if I knew them. But I turned and I walked back. I think I had about 32 third graders that year and I could just hardly compose myself mm -hmm. because I looked out in my classroom and there sat children who I knew their parents were working in those towers. Mm -hmm. And 
the thought mm -hmm. of them not going home to a parent was uh, <laughs> that was frightening, mm -hmm. and that shook our country, mm -hmm. and that made people think. And I think that's what's happening now. Yeah. It's making people yeah. think. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, you know. The Bible tells us all the time, you know, we're supposed to speak of God's goodness to the next generation mm -hmm. so that they know of God's goodness. Mm -hmm. And I'm always convicted about that. And mm -hmm. I always, almost oh. daily, pray that my students, my children, my grandchildren will see my faith and it will be transferred to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And... I always tell them that God doesn't want to live our lives be fearful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. God right. wants us to be faithful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So whatever is in our paths, it this is a fearful time, but we have to approach it. That God does not give us a spirit of fear, but right. God, God is faithful and he will guide us. This morning I woke up to um the words in my I was making tea for my husband and myself and the words to an old song, which that's my heartbeat, mm. the, the old songs. Oh God, our help in ages yes. past, yeah. our mm. hope for years to come. Mm. Be thou our guide, mm. while life shall last to our eternal home. Mm. And that's really how we have to approach it. Mm. <laughs> he is our Heavenly Father, and He's going to guide us through. Mm. And we need to depend upon Him to be our our guide mm. through it all and be submissive and you know mm. but that was a scary time for me um, when I was a teenager I was in the suburbs of Chicago LSD was really prevalent mm. <laughs> and uh, it was that was scary the hippie era mm. and in Indiana you were allowed to have a driver's license at 15 years old and so wow. <laughs> And there were places I was not allowed to drive. <laughs> and, <clears throat> but where I lived, um, I lived in the suburbs of Chicago, but <laughs> my dad didn't want us to go into any public places, like, mm. you know, without them, even in a bathroom. Mm. I mean, people were taking, you know, needles and mm. sticking them in your ankles, mm. you know, f filled with drugs and... It was a scary time. Mm -hmm. It was a scary time. So you had to learn to protect yourself and and watch out. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, mm. as as teachers, those of us that are teachers, mm -hmm. well, as parents, we're, we're mm -hmm. our, our children's greatest teachers. The I think um, a good that can come from this is realizing how little children today know about government yeah. and being a good yeah. citizen mm -hmm. and how it all and even the foundations the underpinnings of the constitution the the bible that was that our country was really founded on the precepts of freedom and mm -hmm. so forth that we find in the scripture and we really need to get back to right. making sure yeah. if they don't learn it in school mm -hmm. parents need to learn it if they never learned it and and, to know, keep the United surprised. States going, uh, the way and enjoying the freedoms yeah. that we just take for so granted, really, really right? mm -hmm. um, that that it, how quickly, yes, if we're willing to just give them up, mm -hmm. and uh, we we realize this is a temporary situation, but precedents are being set. Mm -hmm. But but the point being, real, the importance. If there's one thing we can take away, I think as parents, is the significance of our children knowing and appreciating the freedom that they have in this country. We don't have to carry papers. Mm -hmm. We have right. freedom to just right. cross state lines yes. and to mm -hmm. and don't give that up. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. our kids need to know what freedoms they have in comparison to around the world, mm -hmm. and um, that. They need that's something they need to just not give up. Right. They may not even realize the significance to some things. Mm -hmm. So we're older and we're a little wiser. We realize you've got to convey that to your that's children. They want. So um, we're going to. I want us to talk about a few um, areas now that are kind of more streamlined for church and the ministry. Um, how do you handle criticisms of your husband or your ministry? 
you can answer specific to this time as far as dealing with COVID-19 and quarantine or, or just in general, how you handle when, uh, when he endures criticism or, or your children. It's different when somebody comes face to face and says, I don't agree with this or I have a problem or could I'm we think about this? About yes. This? Right. But to know that they're going to leave, you know, a meeting or leave a service and just go right out and chew them up and spit them out, then I don't think they want to be close to me either. You know, so I struggle with that. I think that's been the hardest thing I've struggled with in the ministry. Um, but how do you handle that? And, and how do you, um, uh, maybe you don't agree with everything sometimes that's decided. Maybe, maybe you may feel that, um, somebody might be jumping the gun or something. And how do you handle that? And, and, uh, of course, you know, we, we know as wives, we're supposed to be submissive, but that doesn't, my mom used to always say, if you feel like you're being a doormat, that means you're lying down on the job. Mm. So we're not supposed to be doormats, mm -hmm. but how do you, um, how do you, uh, rectify, you know, submission and following and also going along and supporting and, and making decisions and handling criticism when people don't agree with what's been decided? Well, I know I'll, I'll answer towards the part, maybe more of, um, the, uh, submission when you don't agree, mm -hmm. um, my husband and I are at, sometimes at two different, I am a glass half full, isn't this lovely, what a beautiful day, let's go to the farm stand and pretend like everything is la la la. And he is more, you know, we, you know, not, I don't want to say the world is coming, you know, crashing in, but at the same time he sees that, you know, and we disagree mm -hmm. on a lot of things. And um, so I guess it's a week or two ago, we had a pretty dis. No, I don't want to say disagreement like we were screaming at each other disagreeing, but was a definite, I had a certain opinion and he definitely had a different opinion. And, um, he kept saying to me, you're allowed to say, well, you, not that I have to have his permission to say, but at the same time, he was making it very clear to me, it's okay for you to have an opinion that's different mm -hmm. than mine. You know, that that's what makes us, we are one, but we're different. Like, mm -hmm. and, and I said to him, well, I, I can't, I have to have the right spirit about this. Mm -hmm. And what helped me helps me is he wanted to hear what I had to say. He did. Mm -hmm. He wanted to hear what what are your thoughts on it? You know, I, it was you know on the whole church is essential mm -hmm. and sending out petitions or having a rally. He wants to know my opinion. Sometimes I'm hesitant because if I know I'm so completely mm -hmm. and not in that in, in this situation I'm for it. I'm all about it. But but using that as an illustration, I know that be, because we've been together thirty years and whatever he does value my opinion mm -hmm. okay and i know that he knows that you know god gives women to some discernment on things you know and, and mm -hmm. so forth and so on so i know that he wants to honor my things but what i always say to him or i said to him the other night was you know honey, ultimately this is not this is not up to me you mm -hmm. answer you're the pastor mm -hmm. or you're hating this dad i said you're the pastor from a right i said so this words. is how i see it okay mm -hmm. I said, but ultimately, I'm not answering to God for your decision for our church. Mm. You are. Mm. So I don't want to be the one that, you know, it, because we have such an influence over our husbands, whether we want to admit it or not. And so I, I think I just have to, it, it's, there's that fine line of submission mm. and yet offering, but then knowing when to shut up, back yeah. up. <laughs> now I've do? offered, now it's over. What do you do then with other people, with outside people who get very upset and angry about things not going the way they feel they should go. <laughs> anybody? For anybody? Anybody. Well, one thing that I have always done, and this may sound strange, sometimes when we talk about the way we really process things, we can sound like a crazy person. Mm -hmm. So, whatever. <laughs> but in my mind, I have always, when people have said wrong things, mm -hmm. done wrong things, hurtful things, I have always tried to put myself in their shoes, mm. in their situation, in their mind, um, almost try to understand them and what would make them want to act that way, mm. want to say that, mm. want to be angry, want to be negative, want to be anxious. Mm. And when I can try to understand them, then I'm, I'm more easily able to love them mm. instead of being angry at them because I feel like anyone who is in a good place 
normally is not going to do hurtful things right. mm -hmm. yeah. or try to hurt people in, on purpose. It's like an animal that gets hurt. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and they're, nice. we're getting their response to something else. We're seeing a reaction to something else. Okay. And so I've always looked at it like I'm in a good place. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not angry. I'm not upset with anyone. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hurt anyone. Uh, and it almost helps me have compassion for them. Mm. Almost like if you were looking at someone who was mentally handicapped, mm. when they say things or do things yeah. that are really crazy, you don't get upset with them because you know they're not in their right mind. Right. Mm. And so you have this understanding that is different. Yeah. And I look at it like people who are doing things like that, either it's sin or it's something in their life has hurt them right. and they have not gotten over that and they keep repeating mm -hmm. bad things yeah and it's because they're hurting mm -hmm. and so i've always tried to look at it like how can i help them yeah like when they it's to me it's almost like a big sign help me yeah i, I mm. i'm in trouble and it's helped me not to get angry with people and i i, I put that in practice in my own family Mm -hmm. with my parents, different things. And I think the Lord helped me with that because yeah. we all are going to be hurt by people right, right. on different levels, mm -hmm. in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think God helped me um, with that. And it's just really made it easy for me to not It really is a sign sometimes of arrested development. Like somebody had something traumatic happen to them when they're young and they that just sort of halted their ability to process and navigate their way through life. So the only thing they know from that point on is to react in anger. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I enjoy studying yeah. people. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I can be in a restaurant and when the waitress is rude, mm -hmm. I immediately think, what, what happened what to happened her? her today? Mm -hmm. What is going on in her life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we can spin it to not, what did you do to me? Right. But what's happened to you? Yeah. And even when it comes to our husbands or different things, I look at it, if someone's upset about us opening, I look at it and think, okay, what's going on in their life to cause them to be this fearful? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Is someone sick? Did they, they experience something in you know earlier in life? Mm -hmm. Or do they know someone? And try to just be understanding. You can still take your stand and lovingly communicate your position mm -hmm. and also try to communicate your understanding for their position. Mm. And I think at times that kind of diffuses things. Not yes. always. Yeah. Soft answer. But, yeah. but exactly. it helps. When your husband exactly. is the pastor, you're closer to maybe even information or his mindset. Yes. And yeah. even knowing you can perhaps influence. Mm. And whereas a lot of times people in the pews, they just, they don't maybe have as many facts as you right. do. And they, right. and yeah. it's, it's natural for them to be, um, just because they don't have information, let's say, to be more worried about certain things. Mm -hmm. There used to be a TV program on Art, Art Linkletter, and it was called People Are Funny. Mm -hmm. And I often say that to myself, if things, if what we're talking about is a, um, not too consequential, you know, they're just, it's annoying maybe, but it's not a crisis, it's just, People yeah. are funny, <laughs> you know, a little bit of a sense of humor. Yeah. People are funny, you know, and just kind of not, not be easily offended, thin skinned yourself, high maintenance yourself, mm -hmm. don't add to the problem. Right. Kind of just, uh, the answer, I don't know, works a lot of times. I can try to shield, you know, if somebody mm -hmm. says something to me, well, you're, this makes no sense. Your husband, first mm -hmm. of all, most people don't say, right. I think, I'd be the last person they would complain about my husband Me too, too, probably, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, most likely. Right. But if they do say something, I don't always have to tell him, oh, right. you know, such and such says that you, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. <laughs> he right. doesn't need to know it. Right. If it's not going to help the situation at all, mm -hmm. you know, then I'm, it doesn't, he doesn't need to know. It. You know, I, I, there was something the other day on, the, somebody put up something negative about mm -hmm. what he was, what he's, mm -hmm. you know, what he's getting ready to do in the church's joining in and I, it didn't say his name, but it was, you know, directed. definitely directed. And, and I wanted to say, did you see that? You know, and it, I, I know he saw it probably, right. but it didn't need to come from me. Did you see mm -hmm. that? Because, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't need that mm -hmm. that day. So I think sometimes with dealing with the negativity, it's mm -hmm. just kind of, 
Timing is everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Right before the message isn't the time. No, isn't the time. Yeah. No. <laughs> We're on the way to church. Um, yeah. Right. Even yeah. maybe not. Maybe not until Tuesday. Well, I was going to say. Right. Right. Not even Monday. Right. It's been a rough day on Sunday. You might want to wait. And it, sometimes, mm -hmm. again, it, it doesn't need to be said. Mm -hmm. It right. just doesn't need. It, it's not going to help anybody. And so, just keeping it. it yeah. You know, I, I saying to someone, "Oh, that's," you know, I mean, it's a free country. You can think what you will. But I'm not saying I would say that. So well, maybe I would. <laughs> it's a free country. But at the same time, just maybe you know, shielding. Yeah. You know, you oh, doesn't have to know everything that people yeah. think or, mm -hmm. or say. And Matthew 18 mm -hmm. works. Yes. Right. Yeah. Give him a yeah. call. Right. Yeah. You right. Know, give him. Talk to him directly. Absolutely. Yeah. That kind of yeah. shuts down some yeah. things. Right. Yeah. How do you handle things? Um, you know, when it's you're not just proceeding in your ministry, but you're proceeding in your family. And maybe you, have you ever had a time where you disagreed about something, uh, how to handle it, Carla? <laughs> to be honest, my husband and I, um, we think a lot alike. Mm. Um, I'm not saying we don't have disagreements. Um, I would say that I am such a fan of submission. Mm -hmm. Like, I am so thankful that God put that in the Bible. And mm -hmm. To be honest, I'm mean, going to have a great husband. Mm -hmm. So right. I feel yeah. for ladies who are in a marriage yeah. where their husband is leading them in a wrong direction mm -hmm. and they have to confront mm -hmm. and they can't really be okay with submitting because they don't right. have the confidence that he's following God. Mm -hmm. Right. But when you do things God's way and the husband is who he's supposed to be, um, it is fantastic. I don't want to be in charge. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be responsible. Yeah, so nice. The older I get, the less yeah. I want to know, mm -hmm. the less I want to be in charge of, the less I want to be responsible for. Mm -hmm. So like Jay was saying, um, my husband values my opinion more than at times I think he probably should mm -hmm. to where I, it's scary. it That's is scary. very yeah. scary. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm very careful, like Jay said, um, when we do disagree on something, end game, like Jay said, you know what? Mm. You're you. in charge. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you to do, like literally, like mm -hmm. I will say at times, do not okay. do what, what I'm I saying. Just say. <laughs> right. Because at times, he will, I mean, change what they're doing. I, yeah. I have strong opinions. Mm -hmm. I am... I'm, I'm not type A, but I have strong opinions mm -hmm. and I'm not afraid to share them. Like maybe my comment earlier makes it seem like I'm passive. I am not really passive. Mm -hmm. I'm not confrontational, but if you push me, I will yeah. speak my mind without fear. Mm -hmm. So with him at times we'll have a discussion and when we come to the end, he'll almost be like, well, that's fine. We'll just be, like, oh no, no. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, no, no, don't do what I said because I really don't want him to do something he shouldn't. And mm -hmm. I don't want to be the one that's in charge yeah. making these decisions. Yeah. And he's a strong leader, but he, mm -hmm. you know, we do agree on a lot of things, mm -hmm. but in the end, he makes the decision and I follow him yeah. mm -hmm. and I support him he and try to agree. make his decision right. If, yeah. if, if that makes sense, like if he's saying we're going to do this and in my mind I'm thinking this isn't going to work because this is going to happen and this is going to happen. Once I turn that page, mm -hmm. my job now is to make sure those things don't happen right. that are going to cause this to be an issue. Yeah. In exactly. my mind, in there, yeah. 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 instead of sitting back yourself. and saying, told you so, yeah. right. now I'm on his team right. and together we're going to make this happen yeah. the best we can with God's help. To me, submission is you literally are on a submission. And it's just my mission to help him in whatever it is, you know. And yeah, you you say what's on your mind about it when asked, and and or even if not, if you feel strongly, you know, you, mm -hmm. you feel the Holy Spirit's really telling you mm -hmm. maybe He hasn't thought about this, bring this up. Um, but in the end, you know, we're we're a team and we're one, and so we're supposed to work together on those things. I want to switch a little bit now into some more practical areas. Um, we received a lot of questions about how do you proceed when you are concerned about the health of those in your own home or the health of those that surround you. I know with uh, my husband is severely immunity compromised. Mm -hmm. So he hasn't been in a store since uh, the end of February. Wow. And we've just tried to protect him, um, you know, taking care to 
whatever, wash your hands and all the, you know, all the things trying to keep it away from him, even though I do believe he had it already. Mm -hmm. Just want to be careful. Um, so what are some things that you, I know you're really big on boosting your immunity and all of that, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Miller. So what are some things that you have discovered about that? Boosting my immunity. <laughs> um, I, I just take a lot of supplements. <laughs> mm. I do. I, um, I always have, but mm. even more so now. And um, it seems to work. <laughs> how do you, um, how do you care for those in your? Hmm. How can I phrase this question? How do you care for those about whom you're con you're concerned about their immune systems, but they just want to just you know be like Jay and just keep going out every day? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I use hand sanitizer. <laughs> That's my big thing. <laughs> Is it seventy percent alcohol though? Uh, it won't work. It's probably not. not. <laughs> um, how how do you handle those things? You know, I mean, it's been fairly easy for me. I, I take it doesn't really every day. Too much. My immune system. I want you to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I take echinacea every day, we six do, a day. We do a lot of oils. We do a lot of oil too. I, I don't even use hand sanitizer. I have thieves in my car and I spray it like everywhere and we clean with thieves and through everyone being, and we had so many kids. I bet we've talked about mm -hmm. this in January. Our kids in our school were so sick, mm. passing the same thing around. And we said, we wonder if they all had mm -hmm. a small version mm -hmm. of this and we had the teens mm -hmm. over during that time and and I just, I mean, I'm just a firm believer in the, the oils. And when they all left, my husband even pulled out the oils and we're like spraying <laughs> it on every surface in the house. And, mm. and God has been good in the fact that we've not gotten sick. But mm. um, I think the big thing we're having with our church is that a lot of our people do work with patients, mm -hmm. I, I'd say minimum, we have 10 nurses in our service, mm -hmm. in our church. And, that's a minimum. and so, and that's a minimum. And we're, we're not, we're not a huge congregation. Mm -hmm. You're talking about where your driving crowd is like 120 and at least 10% of them are working with patients every day. Mm -hmm. You know, they're fearful of bringing yeah. it into the church. Mm -hmm. And then, um, they're fearful of themselves mm -hmm. um and but at the same time you know we have some of our church members we we're talking about on the way here who are living in fear mm -hmm. and so they're it's hard like how do you teach them to not live in fear and then you have some who have compromised immune systems who are still out there but they're taking precautions but not living in fear yeah so yeah. i think yeah, you, you know, have to keep living you have to keep, you have to keep living what do you ask just it we actually have some in church that have stopped Living, living right, oh, yes. right. Wow. They have shut themselves out, mm. and and it's like I've even asked myself, what? When do I approach say something? them and mm. say, "Look, get back <laughs> in it." Yeah, you have yeah. a family. Mm -hmm. You are influencing, and you have to show that God is more powerful. You have mm. to be careful. Mm. I understand that, but. Right. Mm -hmm. What do you do with, with, uh, I mentioned a while ago about a young person who really struggled and ended up taking his own life. What do you do with teens who are emotionally struggling right now with, with not seeing their friends? I mean, these are real issues that people or parents are dealing with. How do you help them? What are some things that you would do for them? I think what I do have a son who does struggle emotionally. And I think what he struggles with is he, um, doesn't understand everybody's emotions, mm. um, but then he holds his emotions in mm. and doesn't understand how to communicate them out. Um, and then I have several friends who struggle with anxiety and this has been a challenge for mm. them. And mm. and I don't struggle with it. So then when they call me, it's kind of hard to kind of see their view. Right. But what has seemed to help them a lot and I have two very close friends who struggle with depression and anxiety and then with my own um, child with this a little bit but it's really making them focus on things that they're thankful for mm. it's making them learn how to switch mm. so I know with my friends that it's been a help and and they've talked and we've I've talked them through it is they have to have I've made them make journals that makes them go on autopilot. So when they can't change their thought process and it's, they're just stuck with these negative thoughts, they pull out their notebook 
and this is a notebook that they made when their mind was okay mm. on verses that help, songs that help, mm. and making it's themselves so think every day of something they're thankful for mm. and reading through that. So then when they're like the bad thoughts and the bad thoughts and they can't get it out, they pull out that journal and idea. they just start reading. So they don't yeah. have to find the verses. Right. They don't have to scroll what my song is. This is the song. What they are. This mm -hmm. is the verse. This is what I'm thankful for. And then as, and I say, as that music is playing, the godly music mm -hmm. about, you know, praising the Lord and loving the Lord and being thankful to the Lord. And as you're reading the verses, then you read the things you're thankful for and you got to make yourself think of something else that's thankful. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. those have been big things. It's like, because you can't, be depressed at the same time as you're being thankful, but you have to switch the mind from one to the other. And that has seemed to help a lot. And just them talking through the things that they're thankful for mm -hmm. kind of takes away the anxiety. And then the other thing is they say, okay, I want you to think of someone that you can write them a note to. Mm -hmm. Because you can't write a note to someone telling them how much you're thankful for them. Mm -hmm at the same time of being depressed. Right. So, and a lot of times they just have to jump start through a couple hurdles and sometimes it takes longer than others. Sometimes mm -hmm. it takes a few verses, a few songs, and then they're out of that spot. Mm -hmm. And then other times it takes hours, mm -hmm. you know, but I think that that's helped them a lot. And even with, what's funny is my one son, he, um, he goes to different treatments to just help him. He's, it's not a psychiatrist or things like that. It's totally different. Um, and it's part of my talk and, and she is not a Christian, but she is a Jewish lady and she mm -hmm. believes in God. And, um, she asked him, you know, we talked to him and we say, you know, we're not going to live in fear. Mm -hmm. And yes, lots of scary things are happening, but God doesn't give us that spirit of fear. We are going to be careful. We are going to be cautious, but God has been good and he has provided things for us. And so she asked me, she said, do you mind if I ask him? How he's feeling through all this and i'm like yeah that's fine and so she asked him and his response was we might run out of food wow. and mm. i was like out of all the times i have talked with him about this that is nothing he's ever said mm. and i found it you know shocking and so she even said to him like well why do you feel like you're gonna run out of food is there not food at home and he goes oh no my mom has bought so much food <laughs> It's popping out of the fridge and, and popping out of the pantry. He goes, but we could run out mm -hmm. because things are running out of the store. We could run out. Mm -hmm. And she said to him, and it actually was humbling to me that God placed somebody in our path to help him through emotions that still believes in God. And I don't have to worry about other things. And she said, even if something bad happens, yeah. is God still good? Mm -hmm. And she, he said, yes. God is still good. Mm -hmm. And so she said to me, she goes, I know what you're teaching in your home. And I know you're teaching them that God is not fear. You know, you're not going to live in the spirit of fear. But maybe remember that even if something bad happens, remind them God is still good. Yeah, that's yeah. important to remember. I just remember. Oh, I was going to say, I have had a, a fear of flying my whole life. going, And I've gone to Australia, like, as far as you can go. And I, it's, you know, grip the, grip mm -hmm. the, the seats. And, um... About a year ago, we were going to go to Israel, mm -hmm. and my husband wanted me to go. I didn't want to go because I didn't want to take the long flight. I couldn't wait to get to Israel. I've been there twice, but I didn't want to go on the plane. And so I started researching some things, of course, and looking online and doing all that. But then um, some Bible verses that came to me. You had mentioned about verses that help in fear. And um, I always think, I like Psalm 91, where it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And there was a picture, you know, God holding up the plane. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you the one thing that really helped me, and I don't know if it helps pe other people, maybe it causes... When I got to the point where I realized that nothing is in my control, mm -hmm. not sitting here right now, mm -hmm. a tree could just come falling if it wants to, <laughs> right through here, hit me on the head, and kill me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, my heart could stop right now. Nothing is in my control. And for some people, I think that gives them an anxiousness, but for me, it gives me a, well, it's nothing is in control. Correct. So why am I more nervous flying on an airplane than riding down the road in the car or, mm -hmm. or sitting in, because I, and then when this virus came, instead of being afraid of it, it's just, it's another example to me of, well, see, mm -hmm. we never, we never imagined this. Yeah. I always thought if I'm, I'm home and I'm in New Jersey and I'm walking on the ground, there's nothing can happen to me. I'm safe. Mm -hmm. It's when I'm up in the airplane. Well, I'm probably, you know, safer in the airplane <laughs> than walking on the ground. Yeah. But what helped me was 
it's all in God's control. Right. Everything is in God's control. So the little things, the big things. So it's, it's kind of like, there's no, mm -hmm. you know, this is scarier because this is, is out of control. It's not out of control. Yeah. It's out of our control, right. but everything is out of our control. Right. I mean, I can be driving down, the car, you know, driving 10 mile an hour, you know, with both hands on the wheel and have a heart attack or go blind or, you know, so when we think that we're controlling things and we try to control things because that's our nature, you know, I, I got to be in control of this situation. It's almost like not God's laughing, but God, you're not in control. You've never been in control. I'm controlling your life. Mm -hmm. I, I'm in the sovereignty of God. Nothing happens by mistake. So might as well just enjoy and that's kind of what i've been doing here is almost like well i can live in fear about what if everybody dies what if you know my mom gets it I, I, those are things i don't want to see happen but me sitting here it's like flying for 16 hours gripping the handle the seat presses if that's going to keep the plane up right <laughs> you know it, it, it changes nothing it yeah. just i just lost 16 hours of valuable time i could have spent reading my bible or sleeping or <laughs> Because I was so afraid I wasted that time. Yeah. So when I come to see that it's like fear, you know, it's just a, it's a time waster. Mm -hmm. And you're worried about 90% of the things mm -hmm. you're worried about never come to pass. Mm -hmm. Right. And if they are going to come to pass, God's going to be with you the whole time. So that whole control thing, when right. we can realize that even the simplest things like a virus, mm -hmm. I never even gave the flu a thought in my lifetime. Like, I'm going to get a flu shot. I'm going to get the flu. You get the flu. You got a headache. You go to bed. You get up. You're bad. You know, so that was nothing I was ever afraid of. Right. Yeah. And but when I realized that this is no different. Right. God is controlling the air. God controls the airplane. God controls this. Yeah. And that, I think that just helped me. When you start to just see that everything. Right. When yeah. you look at the big picture too, and even as far as a parent, you, when you use that term, you know things you've been through. You you did go through them. Yes. And to realize, even as the mom, the value and looking for the value and mm -hmm. what your kids are going to get from going through right. this. Right. They're going looking to come back. out on the other we'll side. We'll look back on this. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so that you can look at it just even being more positive, helping them with their fears. When I, when I hear and you talk to people, I find that the fear is caused by questions the unknown. and the unknown. Mm -hmm. And so this yeah. virus is a perfect storm for that mm -hmm. for people right. because right. you're hearing all these scenarios and all these different scientific things and then this isn't true and it, it, it does and yeah. and when I speak with people the one thing that I've tried to help them do is to have the right focus like mm -hmm. Tammy was saying and mm -hmm. I think of Isaiah where it talks about um, you know whose mind is stayed on thee that shall mm -hmm. perfect peace whose yeah. mind is stayed on thee and what I tell people is this focus on what you know mm -hmm. to be true mm -hmm. yes don't focus on the questions mm -hmm. and the unknowns because all they do is breed fear mm -hmm. and anxiety. Right. right. But focus on what you know. Mm -hmm. You know you're saved. Mm -hmm. You know God loves you. Mm -hmm. You know you're in a good house, in a good family. Mm -hmm. You know you're healthy. You know you have the word of God. And then even in the idea of David, when he, like mom saying, they went through it. Mm -hmm. You know, what did God do for you in the past? Right. Yes. You know he took care of you. You right. know right. God Answer will prayer, take start. care of Answer you. Prayer. So Psalms, don't focus Psalms, on what's Psalms, God going to do in the future. The yeah. now, what right. has God done already? And right. what is he doing now? Right. He has and, a way of track and, and it <laughs> is, it's all about what you allow your mind to focus on. Yes. And um, yeah. when you can just... You know, focus on the things that you know mm -hmm. and the good, true things. And like Tammy said, I tell them, make a list yeah. of all the things you know to be true. Because sometimes we think we know something, but we're not sure if it's true or not. Mm -hmm. Don't even think about those things. Don't right. we know that? Yeah. Yes. Gonna, have you, I lost total confidence in the news. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I don't focus on what the news says. Right. Most I'm literally focusing on what God right. is. If this happens, then that happens. Yes. Okay. Almost, yes. and I would say ninety percent of it, or more. Yeah. Yes. Yes. What is it today? Mm -hmm. no. Right. Well, I mean, I'm not even counting on it. Right. And when so you no. can't control it, right. Right. don't That's, focus on the things you can't control. Right. Right. That's exactly Just right. if if it's yeah. something like you know, if if you know, Travis was funny. He was he was worried about food. Mm -hmm. Like, and he's yeah. nineteen. <laughs> he's worried about running out of food. Right. As ridiculous as this is, I went to my Patriot Supply and ordered food that was good for 25 years that is dry packed that will not be here for two more months <laughs> but it helped him it's yeah. like yeah 
right. it helped him to it. not worry about that. So right. if it is something you can control, <laughs> right. do it. Yeah. You know, you don't have right. to make your kids nervous if you can fix the problem. Right. Right. Yeah, but right. if you can't control it, that's when we need to say like, Jay, God's got this. Right. And we just yeah. have to focus on him yeah. and that he's taking care of us. He always has. He always will. Yeah, and I'm not going to fear yeah. the unknown. Right. So. Right. It's an excellent, excellent opportunity to just to teach them faith. Yes, this is yes. what faith is. Absolutely.